All right, today we're going to be ranking every gender bent face serving by how believable their excuse is or just how good that excuse is. All right, here is the list of all the gender bent servants or gender bent adjacent servants. All right, let's get started. Let's start with the lowest tier of excuses, the ones that aren't creative, believable, or just not good at all. This category is primarily occupied by the characters that explain away that they are females because of mismatched historical records. This gives us Saber, Nero, Jinke, and Ushiwakamaru. Of these, the most believable would be Jane K, as they have the least amount of information on them, but I feel like they would have probably mentioned something about that in some historical records somewhere. The other low tier is going to be Red Hair, which is also our only female to male gender bend. This is because the actual horse fused with Lu Bu because... well, I don't know. It is stated that he merged with Red Hair because she is one of his noble phantasms, but there, there's way better excuses than that. Like, Adelante Alter does the exact same thing, but doesn't change gender, so I'm just kind of perplexed by the whole situation. Next up is the bad excuses. These are the ones that are still pretty bad, but you can see where the writers were going with them. Like, at least they attempted to make up something. We'll start with Bunyan. Bunyan should technically be one tier lower because they also don't know why they were summoned as a female. However, they are a complete gag character made as a female because it is a meme in the community and Rio just wanted to poke fun at it. For that, I'll spare them from the lowest tier. Fran's reasoning is not bad, but it's not great either. It's another history which recorded incorrectly one, but the excuse is that the female monster was made first. This one is okay, but not very creative at all because it's just the old switcheroo. Francis Drake is recorded in history as a male because her crew couldn't bring themselves to view her as a female. They claim that it just didn't feel right and that the captain is just the captain. This is a better excuse than the lowest tier, but still pretty bad. Kage Tora has the benefit of being an avatar to a god, which allows the god to tamper with their vessel, and it is suggested that Bishamatan had made her a female, but she was recorded in history as a male for how brutal she was. As much as I enjoy this idea, I'm still not buying it. Oh, Gareth, my dear sweet Gareth. It is never really explained as to why she is a female. However, she has a magical ring that allows her to change her form, so she may have appeared as a male at times with its assistance, so that is why she is recorded as a male. This is honestly a pretty good excuse, but it doesn't cover why she appears as a male before she got the ring, so got to keep her in low tier as much as it pains me to do so. Sima Yi is technically not a gender bend, but a pseudo-servant, but it is a male appearing in a female's body. However, they just appear to be something like a part of Raina's subconscious that assists her, so I'm going to keep them in the low tier. Raiko is actually kind of interesting, because she was initially thrown away by her parents for being possessed by Ushi Gozen. But after she was found to be a genius, they brought her back and raised her as a male. So until she hit peak milfdom, she acted as a stone-cold soldier and people disregarded her gender. I honestly like this one a lot, but it's incredibly out there and hard to believe given how she is designed. So it's unfortunately low tier. Mordred falls into this category as well, being raised as a male despite their gender. I put her higher than Raiko though, because she went out of her way to try and hide her gender with her helmet. But the female raised male thing is still pretty low tier. Donzo is fun for the fact that her excuse is that she was in fact a robot, technically a Karakuri doll. The historical Kato Donzo was said to use these dolls in their operations, so making the puppet master a puppet as well is very interesting. However, I believe the real reason that she was made to be a female was so that she could have a plot point where she is Fuma's mom. Our last in the bad excuse category is Orion. This is also technically not a gender bend, but the one who does the fighting is a female, i.e. Artemis. The reason why we get her rather than Orion is that she tagged along with Orion when he was summoned, and turned him into a mascot character to keep his womanizing ways in check. I like this excuse! but it's simply ridiculous, so I have to put it in the lower tier. I do love their design, though. It's pretty cute. All right, now we're on to the good excuses, the ones where I'm like, okay, I might be willing to buy this. It's clearly just being done in good fun, and I appreciate that they're coming up with something interesting. The first of these is Jaquise de Malay. She gets put into good because she acknowledges and pokes fun at the fact that there is a male version of her that was released first. She claims that she is a woman because she was heretical. The implication of this is that she merged with the old god Shub-Niguroth, who is a female deity and her spirit origin was warped because of it. So, she was corrupted due to a Lovecraftian merger, and I'm into it. In that same vein, we have Van Gogh. This one is bizarre because it is technically three spirits in one. It is 80% the insane water nymph Clyte, 15% the black box of imaginary numbers, i.e. Volthun, the plant god of Mars, and 5% the memories of Vincent Van Gogh. With this in mind, we actually mostly summon Clytie, who thinks she is Van Gogh, but has an old god festering inside of them. Once I understood what exactly was going on with all of this, I really like the idea, convoluted as it may be. Ketz is next, and her excuse is being that she took inspiration from another goddess, either Venus or Aphrodite, and decided to make themselves beautiful as well. This is because she also shares a connection to the planet Venus. This is solely because she is a god, and thus able to be whatever she really decides to be. 
it is mentioned that she does have the potential to be summoned as a male. So, this one strikes me as the most alright sure of all of these. Neza is mentally a male with the body of a female. This is because Prince Neza killed himself but was later resurrected by the Buddha and the sage Taiyi Zenran. However, Taiyi was a bit too lax when assigning gender and gave Neza the wrong one. However, Neza was fine with it because Neza is just Neza. I would put this higher, but the fact that it stated that a sage was just like, eh, whatever, it brings it down a bit for me. Jack is very unique in why she is a female, because technically this Jack can be a male as well. Jack is quite literally a ghost. She is an amalgamation of all the aborted fetuses and abandoned children who died in Whitechapel. If we're going to be hyper-technical, there are various versions of Jack that can appear in Fate, because the real culprit is yet to be identified, so I do like this excuse because of its creativity. I like the idea of the potential this is a scenario in which this person may have been the killer for Jack the Ripper. Hokusai is another one that is not a gender bend, but the reasoning for his circumstances are great. In an attempt to corrupt the spirit of Hokusai, Cthulhu makes contact with him. However, Hokusai makes fun of Cthulhu's sense of artistic taste. This thoroughly pisses off the old god who turns him into an octopus. So, when he is summoned, his daughter, Oi, tags along, as well as the main vessel. Hokusai can possess his daughter, as we see in the Stage 3 Ascension. This one is comedic and creative, so I give it a good. The next one is so bizarre and out there, it has to be in the good tier. Altera is an alien discovered by the Huns and raised to be a perfect killer. This is another history recorded wrong, but the whole idea of her being an alien is at least something unique, and I really, really enjoy it. Alright, next up we got the great excuses. The ones that even if they are not believable, they are at least very creative and unique, or the reasons given for the gender change is honestly a solid one. Shuten supposedly became a female with the sole purpose of screwing with Kentoki. She changed her gender just to mess with one person and is likely able to change back if she pleases. Kichi Hogan is able to be whatever gender they please to be. They just choose to be in the form that appears to be female because it's the one they enjoy the most. Honestly, I like that idea a lot, just picking the one that you like the most and sticking with it for a while, so I'm going to put her in great. All of the fairy knights are up here as well, because the in-lore explanation as to why they appear as they do is good storytelling. Fairies taking on the saint grass of existing heroic spirits and morphing them into their preferences, but also inheriting some of their skills is just great. For the record, people may not consider these to be gender bends because technically the Bounshi and the Melusine are females by nature. However, as the vessel that they are inhabiting was initially a male, i.e. Tristan, Gawain, and Lancelot, I'm going to consider it to be a gender bend, or at least gender bend adjacent. Ritra is one that is not only a good excuse, but a plausible one. She's a demon dragon thing that is often killed by Indra in the Indian myth. However, they reincarnate over time every single time. So it is possible that they just happen to reincarnate as a female. As in the game, it states that it is a mystery as to why she appears female. So this is just my best guess, and at least there's some like real life lore behind the reasoning. Ibaraki, much like Shuten, is able to alter her appearance. However, she gets the added bonus of occasionally appearing as a female in the myth, usually as Shuten's wife. However, there is an entire myth dedicated to Shuten, where she does turn into the form of an older woman to get back the arm that was cut off by the bowl cut guy. Ranmaro is debatably the weirdest one on this list. She is also an alien, technically a servant for a servant, but an alien all the same. She comes from a planet of Ranmaru's, where everyone is a Ranmaru whose gender is Ranmaru, and the best Ranmaru's are known as Ranmaru X. Are you with me still? Historically, Moira Ranmaru was a beautiful male. There are even some theories that he was a lover to Nobunaga. The veracity to these rumors is up in the air, but the whole servant verse thing and how she admires Nobu is just great, so I'm going to put her in the great tier. Next up is the most big brain of all of these gender bends. Usually, the Gemini are depicted as a pair of brothers, but in Fate, Pollux appears as a female. The only reason I can find for this is so that they could use a pair of sibling voice actors for the character, with Yuma Uchida as Caster and Maya Uchida as Pollux. This is galaxy brain. Our final great category servant is Da Vinci, this one's really good, as it implies that Da Vinci is still mentally a male, but is enjoying his feminine side. He loved the image of the Mona Lisa so much that when he was summoned, he tampered with his Saint Graf enough to appear as her. I place this higher than Neza, who is in a similar boat, because Da Vinci's was completely intentional, which I like more. Plus, if you were to see Da Vinci, you would think it was the Mona Lisa, so she still retains a very important quality from the bend. Alright, now we have the top tiers, the ones that I fully subscribe to, or they are perfectly believable in logic. Starting with Sanzo, she has a Peter Pan complex going on. If you don't know what that means, what that means is that in media, though they are depicted as a male, they are played by a female more often than not. In many iterations of Journey to the West, Sanzo is played by a female acting as a male, so this is just a continuation of the long-standing tradition, though she is female. 
Okita and Nobu take the spot up here because they are both unabashedly gag characters that refuse to elaborate onto why they appear as female. They get this top spot because they were the first gag characters to do this. I put Nobu higher because if we're going to be realistic, she kind of transcends gender in the game, and her big joke is that she knows that the proper Nobunaga is a male and is actually stronger than her, as we see in Final Honoji. It is played solely for laughs, and it's great, and I just I love it. It's fantastic. Usashi has the best excuse as to why she appears female, and that she is from a different universe, but is pulled through the worlds on her journey. It is completely acknowledged that she is not the real Musashi from our time, but it is still played with that she has most of the memories and experiences of our world's Musashi. It is explained very clearly in the story, and it makes her excuse great. Dayon is technically not a gender bend because of their skill set. They are able to be either male or female depending on the situation. This is because in history they were male and female at different points throughout their life. I have a whole video on them, so go check that out if you're interested. Canis is the best gender bend excuse because they too were canonically gender bent. Though they appear female, they are technically male depending on their ascension level. In myth, after Canis was raped by Poseidon, he offered to grant her one wish. She wished to be an invincible male, and so it was done. Thus, she could appear as either male or female when summoned, though she does have a preference for being treated as a male. It's canon, it's great, I love Canis. An honorable mention for this is Astolfo, who is not a gender bend, but appears very feminine. This is for multiple reasons. One is that he was considered to be the most handsome of all the paladins. Two is that he adorned himself in fanciful and beautiful things while attempting to restore role and sanity. This combination of things makes him appear as the beautiful boy we see in Fate now. But that's it! Send me your rankings in the comments or on Twitter, I'll have a list to the tier list in the description. Like the videos, it really does help out the channel. Subscribe to catch these as they go up. Follow my Twitch for significantly less structured content than this. If you have an idea you want to see done, feel free to tell me in the comments and I'll see if I can do it. But for now, keep your chin up. Peace.